If you use a sales funnel in your online business, you need to know your numbers. Your metrics measure the efficiency of your sales funnel and help you to identify any gaps or weaknesses. Now, you've probably noticed that you have a lot of data at your fingertips. Google Analytics, social media software, many of the tools that you use in your business come with analytics for sales metrics, which means that you can easily become inundated with all of that data. So where do you even start tracking your numbers for your sales funnel? And what can your metrics actually tell you about how your sales funnel is actually performing? That is what we're talking about today. If you're new here, my name is Carrie and I'm a business operations specialist. I help successful businesses with messy metrics clean them up so they can get simple and accurate information from their data, which enables them to grow more quickly and more efficiently. Before we talk about the seven main numbers you can see in your sales funnel, let's review how a sales funnel works. A sales funnel is a visual representation of the customer journey. Picture a funnel with the largest section at the top. This is where your website visitors discover your business, maybe through one of your YouTube videos, a blog post, or a social media post. They visit your site, they browse around, and they become more and more engaged with your brand. They might download one of your freebies, like a checklist or cheat sheet, or subscribe to your email newsletter. And your goal is to keep your prospects around long enough so that by the time they reach the end of the funnel, they are aware of who you are, they like what you're doing, and they eventually move towards becoming a customer. This process of encouraging prospects along this line is called nurturing, and it's not always easy. Prospects can drop out of the sales funnel at any stage for any reason, and that's why metrics come in handy. They can help you pinpoint exactly where you're losing prospects in your funnel so you can adjust your strategy and help to improve your numbers. Today, we're going to narrow in to the important metrics for specific sales page funnels. Let's dig into what those metrics are and where you can find them. First, let's look at your traffic sources. This gives you an idea of how well your marketing efforts are performing at the very top of your sales funnel. Where are people discovering your business? What is the content that's actually bringing people to your sales page? For example, you might notice that prospects find your business website when you publish blog posts on certain topics or that people click through to your website when you share videos on Instagram. It can also show you which platforms are bringing people to your sales page that are actually converting. No more guessing if your LinkedIn or Instagram traffic is actually bringing in more conversions. That can all be tracked using Google Analytics so you have definitive data that you can make decisions from. By analyzing your top performing traffic sources, it's easy to see what you're doing right with your marketing strategy and where you have room for improvement. This might sound a little bit obvious, but looking at the actual number of people visiting your sales page is the next most important number to consider. It is really difficult to tell how an offer is being received if you're getting very few eyes on your sales page. And I can't tell you the number of clients and coaching students I've worked with who are convinced that their offer is terrible, only to dig into their numbers and realize that almost no one actually saw the offer. So before jumping to the conclusion that you need a new sales page or new copy or new pricing or a whole new offer, please ensure you've had a reasonable number of people actually see your sales page. I also suggest viewing the average amount of time your user spends on your sales page, as this time spent on the sales page will tell you if a potential customer's needs are being met and how interested they are in learning more about your offer. This goes hand in hand with seeing how far down the page the user is actually scrolling, as someone who's really interested in your offer will take the time to go all the way through the information that you have to share to see if it's right for them. If a lead is spending very little time on your sales page or only scrolling down 10% of the page before they exit, you're likely not convincing them that your product or service is right for them. So look for ways to edit your copy to make it more compelling, incorporate design elements that really draw the eye further down the page as you present your marketing argument. The next important piece of data to consider, look at the devices being used to visit your sales page most often. Using Google Analytics, you can see if the majority of your users are using desktop, mobile, or tablet. If most leads are viewing your page on mobile, but are leaving before they're starting the checkout process, there could be an issue with the way that your mobile site is working. Look for obstacles that are preventing leads from moving forward to checkout and to purchase. Do your forms autofill to save time? Are people required to create an account and sign in before they buy? How is your site speed, formatting, and navigation on mobile? Once you know which device is most commonly used to interact with this site, you can make the necessary adjustments or improvements to enhance that user experience. And please make sure to test your sales page and checkout process on as many device types as you can before going live to be proactive about identifying any issues that might come up for your customers. Next, let's look at the number of people initiating checkout. Here we can see how many of the people who have visited your sales page are ready to take that next step past the interest stage and are getting ready to buy soon. This means you've successfully nurtured your prospect through your sales funnel this far, and they might be close to making a purchase, but something might be holding them back. Is it the price? Is it your checkout process? Is it too long? Is it complicated or daunting? Do you offer the payment processor that they're looking for? Do you have payment plans that make your offer more accessible? All of these reasons and more can prevent someone from taking that next crucial step to actually becoming a customer. So ensuring a consistent conversion rate from your sales page to checkout page through these items will help your sales to increase. 
An order bump is an attractive, typically low-cost offer that customers can choose to add to their purchase with just the click of a button. It dovetails beautifully with the crux of your main offer and helps them to accomplish their goals. A one-time offer, or OTO on the other hand, is usually a little bit higher priced and provides even more value to the next original purpose and provides the next step in their journey. Often OTOs are sold off of their own sales pages and can be quite a bit more expensive than the initial product or offer being sold. But both OTOs and order bumps are great additions to your sales funnel to help you serve your customer better and also to increase your average order value. So keep an eye on your conversion rates for both of these kinds of offers and make the needed tweaks to your copy so your customers can fully understand how these offers will enhance their learning or experience. And please do keep in mind that sometimes there's some creativity needed to find just the right order bump and OTO for your particular main product. And last but definitely not least, the number of purchases. You have customers, it is time to celebrate. The number of purchases will tell you how many times your sales funnel actually converted someone into a buyer. You'll want to use the number of purchases to calculate your conversion rate, which is the ratio of prospects to enter your sales funnel to those that actually do become customers at the end of the funnel. The higher the number of purchases or transactions, the higher that conversion rate will be. And the higher your conversion rate is, the more effectively your sales funnel is performing. Understanding what your baseline conversion rate is and what is standard for your particular industry helps you to identify what numbers you really should be trying to hit. And really, that's where the magic of conversion rates come in. You can easily see which step is performing the worst in your funnel and focus your attention there. It might be your checkouts to purchase conversion rate is super low and you need to figure out why. Or it could be that your funnel is converting really well on every step and you really do just need more more traffic to your sales page. Once you know what numbers you're looking for and why, tracking and analyzing said data becomes much easier, especially when all of this can be accomplished with a well thought out Google Analytics setup. No more searching through multiple tools or spreadsheets, all of this can be collected in your analytics account and easily visualized in a funnel dashboard. I hope that this video has helped you to better understand which metrics you should be tracking for your sales funnels and how that information can help you to make decisions that impact your marketing strategies. What stage of your sales funnel do you struggle with the most? Please let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss my next video. See you next time.